In section 10, we're going to look at the, some of the properties of alkenes and how they're made. We're then going to continue our discussion of alkenes in section 11, where they talk, we talk about some of their reactions. The first thing we're going to cover is a little bit more alkene nomenclature, basically focusing on common names. As discussed previously, common names are not used uh, that much anymore, except in industry and other sort of uh, professions where uh, some of these molecules are important, industrial chemicals or things like that. We're going to look at the common names of two alkenes. The rest of them we will just use the IUPAC name. The first one is this one. This is the two carbon alkene. It's the smallest alkene that we can have. It's called ethylene. The IUPAC for this is ethene. You can see really the only difference is that we have this extra YL in there. Related to ethylene is propylene, three carbon alkene. And again, we have an extra YL compared with the IUPAC, which would just be propene. These names are still widely used because these are important building blocks for a variety of industrial processes. You may, for example, heard of polyethylene, which is a type of plastic made from ethylene itself. Related to these molecules are two special carbon groups that we find that have special common names. The first of them is this, called the vinyl group. The vinyl group is essentially our name for a group which is composed of basically ethylene, but with uh, one of the bonds attached to the carbon, then attached to something else or substituted in some way. Related to that then would be this group. This is called the allyl group. In the allyl group, we again have a propylene, but we have uh, some substitution on not the carbons of the double bond, but on one of the carbons directly adjacent to the double bond. These positions then, where the substitution occurs, are often named for this group. So for example, um, when we have positions directly attached to a carbon-carbon double bond, we call them vinylic positions. When we have um, groups attached on a carbon adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond, we say they are in allylic positions. Next, we're going to talk about the degree of unsaturation, which is also called the index of hydrogen deficiency. And in fact, I recall that I learned it as the index of unsaturation. This is a, actually a very useful tool for getting at the structure of an unknown molecule if we know its formula. One of the reasons why we still teach it is that this was widely used 100 years ago when we didn't have instrumental methods in order to be able to um, determine the structure of an unknown substance. And we had to use chemical methods. Uh, one of the first things that was always done at that time when you had an unknown substance is an elemental analysis where you figured out the empirical formula of the molecule. You could then use that along with in this degree of unsaturation to determine if there were double bonds, rings, and other kinds of groups in the molecule. The degree, the degree of unsaturation is based on an observation that was made about just regular, normal, non-ring alkanes. That observation is that there's a pattern to the formula of these molecules. If there are n number of carbons in that formula, there will be 2n plus 2 hydrogens in there. So for example, if we think of C2, n is 2, we would have 6 hydrogens if we didn't have a double bond. And that is in fact the case. So this number of hydrogens 
or this formula is often called the ideal formula of a molecule just because it represents a molecule that is extremely simple, has no double bonds, no rings, no heteroatoms, nothing. It's just a regular alkane. What was then discovered was that molecules that had what we now know as pi bonds, but really double bonds, um, would have two fewer hydrogens than would be found in the ideal formula based on the number of carbons. Similarly, molecules that had rings also had two fewer hydrogens than the ideal number of hydrogens based on this formula. When we take a molecule like this, which has a carbon-carbon double bond, and we treat it with hydrogen gas and a metal catalyst, palladium, platinum, or nickel, what we see is that the double bond is removed from the molecule and in its place are substituted or added two hydrogen atoms. So in a sense, what we say is that this molecule absorbed a hydrogen or an H2 molecule. We're going to discuss this, this reaction in more detail in, a, in a section 11. We're also going to see it later this chapter. This reaction is called hydrogenation. We're adding hydrogen into the molecule. When scientists were beginning to look at molecular structures, what they discovered was that um, you could only add a certain amount of hydrogen into a molecule. A molecule would accept hydrogen until it reached the ideal formula, and then it would not accept any more hydrogen. At that point, the hydrogen would not be absorbed anymore. We would say it was completely hydrogenated. And in fact, they called molecules that were completely hydrogenated would not accept any hydrogens. They said they were saturated with hydrogen and they became, be, uh, became known as saturated compounds. Pi bonds and rings were called elements of unsaturation because a, a molecule with a pi bond or a ring would have fewer carbons than the completely saturated equivalent. And so the pi bonds were causing the molecule to be unsaturated or not completely filled with hydrogens. The index of unsaturation then was a number that told us how many unsaturations existed in a molecule. We could either look at the formula where for every unsaturation there would be two missing hydrogens, or we could look at the structure because we know that every carbon-carbon double bond would be one unsaturation, every ring would be one unsaturation, and as we're going to see, a triple bond, because it contains two pi bonds, would be two unsaturations. So look at these examples. Here's a molecule that has one carbon-carbon double bond. We would therefore say that that has one unsaturation. This molecule has a ring, which would be one unsaturation, and a carbon-carbon double bond, which would be a second unsaturation. So we would say a total of two unsaturations. This molecule has two perpendicular pi bonds, as we saw when we looked at these in our chapter on bonding. So each of these pi bonds could absorb a hydrogen molecule. Therefore, two, one triple bond I mean, adds up to two unsaturations. If we had an unknown structure, we could try to determine the degree of unsaturation using its formula. To do so, there's basically three parts. First, what we're going to do is determine what, for lack of a better name, we call the ideal number of hydrogens, which is basically just, if I had an alkane with the same number of carbons, how many hydrogens would that have in it if there were no rings or unsaturations? So the ideal number is equal to two times n plus two, where n is the number of carbons in the formula. So four carbons, two times n plus two, 10 hydrogens, ideally, etc. cetera. 
we want to compare that to the actual number of hydrogens in the formula of the unknown molecule. Unfortunately, there's a problem. If there are any other elements in there besides carbon and hydrogen, those elements can sort of distort the number of hydrogens in the molecule. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to modify that number of hydrogens to account for the ways that other elements can change the number of hydrogens without actually adding any pi bonds or rings. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the number of hydrogens given in our given formula. We're then going to add one hydrogen for each halogen in the formula. The reason for this is that to put a halogen into a molecule, we have to make room by removing a hydrogen and replacing it with a halogen. But that doesn't actually create any double bonds. So the number of hydrogens is lowered without actually causing double bonds to appear. So we're going to add that in so that we get an accurate comparison. If there are any oxygen in the molecule, we can just ignore them because oxygens can be inserted into a molecule without changing the number of hydrogens and without adding a double bond. In contrast, if there are nitrogens in a molecule, when we insert nitrogens, we add hydrogens because we add more spaces for groups to attach. So what we're going to need to do is subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen. We're then going to take these two numbers and do a very simple calculation. Calculation looks like this. We're first going to determine how many hydrogens is the actual formula missing when compared to the ideal formula. So we're just going to take the difference between those two numbers. Then we're going to say for each two hydrogens that are missing, we have an unsaturation, either a pi bond or a ring. So we're going to take the number of missing hydrogens and divide it by two. That will then tell us how many unsaturations we have in our molecule. Here's an example. Azitothymidine, abbreviated AZT, is a drug that's used to treat HIV and AIDS. It has this formula. How many unsaturations are there in this molecule? We're going to start by looking at the number of carbons, which is 10, and determining our ideal number of hydrogens. So 2 times 10 plus 2. Ideally, if this were an alkane, it would have 22 hydrogens. We're then going to take our actual number of hydrogens, which is 13, and we're going to modify it. We're going to add one for each halogen. In this case, there are no halogens in the formula. So 0 halogens times adding 1 is we net effect of zero. We're going to not do anything for the oxygen. So even though we have four oxygens, we're just going to ignore them, zero times four. And then we're going to subtract one for each nitrogen. So we have five nitrogens times negative one. And then we sum these together. And so when you take 13 minus five, you get eight. This is our modified actual number of hydrogen. To determine the index of unsaturation or the degree of unsaturation, what we're going to do is first look at how many hydrogens are missing by taking the difference between our ideal number and our actual number. So 22 minus 8, we are missing 14 hydrogens. Then we know that there is one unsaturation for every two hydrogens, so we divide that by 2, and we get 7 unsaturations. 